Frustrated at writing boring and lengthy requirements documents and still getting poor project results? Then you need to focus on this one key activity. A scarily high percentage of businesses are burning huge amounts of their project budget and resources trying to implement solutions but are failing repeatedly. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to avoid this by delivering simple and effective process models, which will give you the fundamental insights into your business, allowing you to focus only on priorities and turn your projects into success stories. Hi, my name is Colin Parsons, and I unexpectedly went from being a business analyst to a process modeler overnight, and it completely changed my perspective on how successful projects need to be run. Eight years ago, after being disillusioned with failing projects, I was offered the opportunity of completing a short-term assignment in a newly formed process modeling team. Skeptical at first, I thought process models were more a tick-the-box exercise and added no real value. I could not have been more wrong. Immediately it hit me just how fundamental process modeling must be to the success of a project and the wealth of insight and knowledge it brings to that project. So what had I been missing up until this point? Well, typically people approach process models from either a manual process perspective or a system functional perspective. Rarely are people able to successfully combine the two. This is a big mistake because it's like seeing half the world you're only focusing on one part, so you miss that complete picture. Now, there is a way to combine these two, but it's rarely done. And even when people try, they often miss the mark. They either don't have the right training or the time necessary to develop an effective process model. They rush in, often working within tight deadlines, and end up with an inadequate process model that ultimately ends up in the bin. Look, process models aren't supposed to be buried in a requirements document. It's a living, breathing thing. And once you learn how to do this properly, it consistently delivers the foundation that everything in your project will be based upon, giving you things like the end state vision, clarity over scope, and helps guide and navigate around those obstacles. All the things that projects struggle with until it's too late. It became clear to me that this processing model approach was so valuable, but so overlooked. But the strange thing for me was that it was actually very simple to create. Just by following some simple principles, you could create a framework to build these models. But again, most people don't do this because they just don't know how to do it. So that's why we're here. In the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you about these, this brilliant approach. There's five key steps in building these types of process models. The first is to take a step back before diving into modeling out a process. Why is this important? Unlike other project activities, you can't just make it up as you go along. It's essential to give thought and structure to your models. To do this, you need to take a pause from the underlying process activity, and spend time detailing out what makes a great process model. In my free training, I show you exactly how to get the most from this preparation stage and what people frequently miss out when they try to do this. Secondly, spend time building your process model framework. This framework must include detailing of key elements you need to support your process models. Defining these elements up front ensures you can consistently deliver the same format and design time and time again. And you're not taken off track by the whims of the day. I've repeatedly seen examples where process models adhere to simple and straightforward ideas on a Monday, but by Friday they've ditched all of these and introduced a ton of format changes and new shapes and concepts. But the result is the quality of the process model suffers and a significant amount of value is lost. Consistency is crucial in process modeling, as this builds integrity, which in turn builds trust with your audience. If you don't have a process model framework in place or don't know where to begin, I go into a lot more detail in that, my additional free training session. Third, focus on building a process model template, one which can be reused time and time again. Relying on system defined templates may seem like a quick and easy solution, with system-defined templates, you can literally spend hours trying to tweak your shapes to fit where you want them to, and in the end, the system automatically moves them into a space that completely throws your process out. Investing a small amount of time up front to build your own template is essential and should not be underestimated. When building a template, there are a number of key areas to focus on, and I cover these off in the free training if you need some guidance. The fourth step focuses on people skills and engaging with your audience. Most people ignore the fact that they will be speaking to other types of people when they try to get the information required to map out a process. But often overlooked is the subject of how to engage with your audience and what preparation is needed in advance of speaking to someone. 
Struggling to engage or get time with people who share their knowledge will cause a lot of headaches and delays, so you need to plan on how to get around this. I go into depth about a key aspects of knowing your audience in the workshop training. Finally, we often fail to celebrate successes. This failure happens a lot more than it should, which also overlooks the ability to learn and continuously improve. Spending time to reflect here will allow you to make some tweaks to your approach and assess valuable insights in order to make adjustments and go faster next time. I talk all about these insights in the workshop training. It's clear to see there's so much more to process modeling than just sticking a few boxes and arrows on a page. So if you want to stop being stuck in this endless cycle of negativity and project chaos, where you're constantly struggling to even get the simplest aspects of the project agreed, such as terminology and scope, Instead, you want to start to focus on implementing dream solutions that make huge impacts on your business and clients, then join me on the training session that is currently running. So, ask yourself, how long will you continue to work in failing projects until someone higher up starts asking questions and looking for people to blame? Make the decision to take control of your situation and start changing the way you view projects before it's too late. Don't just follow the project crowd and pretend to know what's going on, do something about it and take charge by delivering powerful and effective process models. Sooner than you expect, you'll start building a network of relationships with business teams, managers and IT teams, and you will become the go-to person. Make the decision to take control of this situation. And start changing the way you view projects before it's too late. Then you can start feeling good about the work you're doing every day and make your mark in the world. Avoid the pain of feeling lost and confused in your projects. Stop waiting for your project to be cancelled so you can just move on to the next failing project. Instead, start making better decisions and following a different path and create something unique that brings massive value to you and your projects. So click the link below to register. You never know, it could change the trajectory of your career.